Hello everyone and welcome to this Australian Biocommons webinar. My name is Patrick Capon and I'm the Science Communication Officer at Australian Biocommons and I'll be your host for today. In this webinar series, we share useful information about the latest digital techniques, data and tools uh, for the life science community. Each month we hear from local and international experts who present a bioinformatics topic that will support Australians to deliver their best environmental, agricultural and medical research. You can keep up to date with the latest Biocom's news and events through the channels that are listed on your screen. Before we begin today, we would like to take a moment to acknowledge the traditional owners and, custodi and their custodianship of the lands on which we meet today. We pay our respects to their ancestors and their descendants who continue cultural and spiritual connections to country. In my case, this is the Turbul and Yagara people in Brisbane. We recognise their valuable contributions to Australian and global society. Today, we're thrilled to welcome Geraldine van der Ora to speak to us today about building the future of bioinformatics with Nextflow. Geraldine is the lead developer advocate at Secura, and her mission in this role is to engage and nurture the Nextflow community. She previously spent over 10 years at the Broad Institute managing outreach and comms for the Broad's genomic analysis and pipelining software and has co-authored the book Genomics in the Cloud. She also holds a PhD in bacterial genomics from University Catholique de Louvain in her country, home country of Belgium. Welcome to the webinar, Geraldine. I'll hand over to you to start your presentation. Uh, thank you so much, Patrick. It's a delight to be here um, with you. And um, yeah, let's, uh, let's start talking about Nextflow. All right, so I'm here to talk about uh, Nextflow and ideally how it can help you um, in your bioinformatics work. Uh, so briefly, just to, to uh, introduce the, the company, uh, Sikera um, is a company that makes the Nextflow uh, open source software. And uh, that's what I'll be focusing on today. All right, uh, we're going to talk uh, mainly about Nextflow and how it can help you. Um, I'm going to walk you through, show you what it looks like uh, to run Nextflow pipelines. Uh, I'm going to talk about the NF Core project, which is a really um, great community and project uh, that can hopefully help you a lot. We'll talk about how to get started, how to get help, and how to engage with the community. Um, I'll talk a little bit about Secure Platform, which is a commercial product that Secure makes, um, but that is available and usable um, for free uh, as a free tier, as well as freely available to qualifying academics. Um, talk a little bit about what that means. And we'll talk, uh, let you know about some upcoming events that might be of interest to you. And at the end, we'll have some time for questions. All right, so let's talk about what is Nextflow and how does it help? How can it help you? Um, so the problem we're trying to solve here is that uh, data analysis in this day and age can be a lot of work. Uh, typically, many of you will be working um, with data generated from biological samples uh, through a variety of technologies. Um, we'll just say omics technologies in general. It started with genomics, but it has expanded to a lot of related um, technologies and data modalities. And so basically what you're getting out of this data generation process, kind of regardless of what technology it is, is a big pile of raw data. And then uh, you take out your magic wand, you run some bioinformatics, and you get some output results. And that's typically what you want to um, actually use to generate some biological insights to answer a scientific question. And the question is, what happens in that box with the bioinformatics magic? Um, typically, you have a big pile of data that you need to process. Uh, how do you process? You run a variety of command line tools, many of which have different computational requirements, different input requirements, et cetera, uh, different kind of requirements in terms of uh, what kind of hardware, what kind of um, software it needs. Um, and you need, ideally, that processing to be as automated as possible. Um, so that you don't have to spend all your time running commands. Um, and you want it to be reproducible so that anytime you run the same command on the same data, you expect to get the same output out of it. Um, so typically, people write pipelines to make this happen. Um, so 
let's talk about pipelines. This is uh, an RNA-seq pipeline, um, the visual representation, and you can see there are many steps. There are many, um, uh, many processing steps that you need to apply to the data. You have some branching sometimes, you have some alternatives in terms of the kinds of uh, the specific tools that you might choose to run, sometimes depending on your experimental design, sometimes on um, your preference in terms of what tool you trust the most, etc. And so you have a, a, a whole number of steps that you need to orchestrate um, and to, again, to uh, run in a way that's as automated and reproducible as possible. And that what is what Nextflow is for is writing pipelines so that you can have one more flow script that will describe every step that needs to happen um, so that you can just run the pipeline and do all that processing in exactly the same way every time you get some new data. Um, so what are your options? There's a number of tool options um, and I'm, I'm classifying them generally. Uh, and this is kind of my personal take on this. Uh, there, there will be some controversy in an argument about um, the relative merits, but roughly from my experience of being kind of in this domain for about 10 years, um, there's on the far left, there's the old school scripts uh, where you, you take a general purpose language like Bash or Python, and you write one after another the steps that need to be processed um, and how they relate to each other. And that typically takes a lot of coding um, because there's nothing in those languages that's really specific to, to uh, the question of how to orchestrate a workflow. Um, so that's, that can be quite complicated and tedious and difficult to read and difficult to port. Uh, you, you run into portability issues if you need to share your scripts with a colleague who's running on different infrastructure, et cetera. Um, so to compensate for these problems, uh, some uh, early systems, some of the first systems that were developed to deal with this in bioinformatics, uh, specifically for, were, for example, um, what I have under those first gen, first generation workflow systems like Galaxy, which is a, a web GUI based uh, system for chaining together tool execution uh, that are described in XML. Um, or SnakeMake, which is a package that's based on Python, but adds some functionality that's specific for uh, describing and running workflows. Um, and then on, on, on the right, you have the next generation, what I, what I like to think of as next generation workflow languages like Nextflow, but also WIDL, WDL, which stands for Workflow Description Language, and CWL, which stands for Common Workflow Language. Um, and I've worked a lot in the past with Whittle, uh, the second one. Um, they all were kind of developed um, with similar principles of portability and reproducibility in mind. So let's talk a little bit about those three options. Um, we'll talk a lot more about Nextflow. <laughs> Spoiler, that's going to be the one I'm going to recommend to you. That's what I'm here to talk about. Uh, Whittle and CWL are also perfectly reasonable uh, languages. Um, Whittle is a domain-specific language that's very Bash-like in, in uh, what it looks like and how you write it. Um, and CWL is basically a combination of YAML and JSON for, for describing um, the tasks that need to be run. They um, honestly all have, oh, and I should say Nextflow is also a domain-specific language that's based on Groovy. Uh, which is related to the Java ex ecosystem. Um, Nextflow comes integrated with its execution engine. Uh, Whittle and CWL are languages that are separate, and then there's um, a kind of a selection of execution engines that you can pair um, with them in order to actually run the workflows. Um, and there are some, some you know, uh, pros and cons. Uh, earlier this week, we actually posted a podcast where um, uh, one of the Nextflow engineers and I had to talk through differences between Nextflow and Whittle. If you're interested in that, I'd recommend checking out the podcast. Uh, basically, Whittle is very uh, user, probably the most user friendly of the bunch, honestly, um, but it's in intentionally very constrained in what it can do. And so it's, it tends to be more limiting um, and a lot less flexible, and it has some portability issues. Uh, CWL is quite powerful, um, but it's, it's 
fairly difficult uh, to, to master. And it's a lot more engineer oriented. And so it tends to be challenging for biologists, uh, biologist types. Um, I'm here to talk about NextFlow, which uh, has kind of the what we think of as the, the right balance of power flexibility, but also user friendliness. So it is accessible for people who have not had any like formal computing um, backgrounds. I myself trained as a wet lab microbiologist, taught myself Python during my PhD. Um, I have never had a programming course, uh, but I find NextFlow um, something that I can use to express um, workflow languages. So that's going to be my recommendation. So let's talk a little bit more about NextFlow. Um, oh, and I should I should say also, if we look, and this is a paper um, that came out this year that, that was looking at the number of uh, publications citing various workflow frameworks, um, NextFlow is the one that is showing the most rapid growth uh, in, in the community right now, uh, which, you know, it, doesn't mean that it's the best, but it does mean that it's the one that's uh, growing in popularity at, at a significant rate. And we'll talk a little bit about why that is. Um, I'll also add that, uh, assuming that that many of you may be kind of early career uh, by, in bioinformatics and related fields, um, we're seeing NextFlow fairly frequently mentioned as a skill that is in demand in uh, job ads. So we looked at some um, bioinformatics job postings over the past few months, and quite a quite a number of them mentioned NextFlow explicitly as a skill that's in demand. So hopefully that might motivate you also to uh, want to take a look and um, and kind of get that in your toolkit in your toolbox because it is a skill that is probably going to help um, you develop your career. So let's talk about NextFlow itself. Um, hopefully at this point I've convinced you that it's it's worth checking out at least. Uh, one of the really nice advantages of NextFlow is that it's built to be agnostic of what infrastructure it's running on. So it can run pretty much anywhere and everywhere on mainstream um, computing environments. So you have your code in GitHub or similar code repository. Um, you, in the code, you will uh, use containers. Uh, you can also use conda environments. Uh, containers are preferred for pointing to the actual tools that you want to run. Um, and then you can run that on pretty much any computing environment, whether you're on a local on-premises uh, HPC system, or if you're on one of the major clouds like Google, AWS, or Azure, uh, you'll be able to run your NextFlow pipelines. And you'll be able to run on data that's in a variety of storage environments as well. Um, so I'm going to show you just a, a few a few code examples just to get give you a sense. Don't worry if you're you're not quite getting all of the syntax, but just to get give you a flavor of, of what it looks like. This is the kind of the most minimalist example of Nextflow you can think of, which is a, a tiny tiny little workflow um, that just uh, runs the echo hello world command, but encapsulated in Nextflow code. Um, and this is just to show you the the building blocks. Uh, any step in your pipeline will be encapsulated in something we call a process that will at some point specify a command line that needs to be run. Um, and then you'll have a workflow block where you actually call the process, uh, invoke the process, and that is how, what tells NextFlow to actually do something, to run something. So that's a very minimalist example. Um, if you were to run that, uh, assume that that's in... Uh, code file called hello world.nf. Um, once you have nextflow installed, which is just one command line, uh, you can do nextflow run hello world.nf and boom, it will run it for you. And that's what the uh, uh, console output will look like. Now, this is obviously a very simplistic example. As you learn nextflow, you will learn to do things like uh, add input and output definitions. So you can have variable outputs. You can pass in parameters from the command line and things like that. Um, and so there's there's some additional syntax that allows you to obviously do more, more elaborate things. Uh, but just to show you a little example, um, this is uh, the same kind of the same functionality, but now we're uh, additionally 
uh, specifying an input from the command line. Um, and here, I just want to point out this this channel thing, uh, chan uh, where I'm passing in the greeting that I want to emit um, as part of my hello world through a parameter, and I use a channel dot of constructor. Again, don't worry too much about the syntax, but I just wanted an excuse to introduce the idea of channels because channels is the next flow specific concept that is kind of the most different from how other languages handle things. Um, a channel is a structure that we use to shuttle inputs and outputs between processes. Uh, again, where a process is a step in your pipeline, um, the channel is what's going to feed in the inputs and then collect the outputs and feed that into your next task, your next step. Um, and what's really special, what's really cool about channels is that they implicitly allow you to parallelize things without having to write any code for that. So if I have just one greeting in my in my inputs, it'll just do the process call one time. But if I give it a list of three different greetings, um, Nextflow will, with the same code, will run the process on each of the greetings. And if your architecture allows it, it will parallelize it. So it will run everything in parallel. And you don't have to write any code to say that it has to run in parallel. Just put multiple elements in, in the channel. And it'll happen automatically. And then it'll collect the output in a new channel. And that's what's going to be passed on to the next process. Um, and so if we add a new, um, a second step to this very simple Hello World pipeline, let's say we, we're going to take the output of the first step and convert the text to uppercase. Um, we just add a process that runs a command line. Here's a traditional uh, kind of Unix um, pipe that uh, takes the, the, the text from the file and uppercases it. Um, all I need to do to connect the two together is when I call the, uh, the second process in my pipeline in the workflow block, um, I, I take the output of the first process. My first process is called say hello. So I do say hello dot out. And that is saying, take the channel that's coming out of the first process and feed it into the second process. And you can basically do that to connect any number of processes either in series or you can have some fairly, so I won't go into the detail of the code for that, but you can have some fairly elaborate branching, conditional statements. You can, you can do whatever plumbing you need to do for your analysis um, using a system of channels and operators. Um, so that gives you a lot of flexibility and a lot of power to implement whatever analysis you need without writing a lot of code. And the result is that you can build uh, these portable, highly reproducible pipelines. Um, and they're also uh, pipelines that you can provide to your collaborators, you can share, um, and they'll be able to run in exactly the same way as you, uh, regardless of what the infrastructure is that they're running on. So that's the idea. Um, now, the what I mentioned earlier, the NF Core uh, project, this is where it becomes really cool. So in itself, uh, Nextflow is a very powerful framework for executing pipelines. But what, what makes it uh, especially popular is that there's um, a project that was started a few years ago. It's called NF Core uh, that is a collaborative community effort uh, that's independent of Scara that um, led to development and it's still an inactive, it's still very active um, development of pipelines and tools and best practices for writing workflows in um, in Nextflow. And so this was this was founded, co-founded by Phil, who who used to have my job, but then he moved on. Uh, he's now the uh, a senior product owner for open source um in within Sakara. So he's responsible for overseeing all of the uh the open source developments um that we do. And uh, which is great because I got his job and it's a really fun job. Um so thank you, Phil. <laughs> um but it it it's coming back to you and of course it's a really significant project because 
it produces this set of uh, community curated analysis pipelines that anyone can use out of the box. Um, and they're developed in a way that um, is really pushes for high standards of quality. So there's systematic testing, there's test data, documentation, um, they're using templates and so on. So they're, they're very high quality pipelines and anybody can use them um, kind of out of the box. At this point, there's 108 pipelines in NF Core that are ready to use. Um, and they span a number of a pretty wide range of domains within kind of the omics space. Uh, there's also a few that are completely outside um, the omics and outside of biology because it, the system has kind of spread uh, to other domains of, of scientific analysis that have similar problems. Um, but here we're only kind of focusing on, on the omics side of things. Um, and there's a number of, of, uh, of uh, studies um, that use these NF core pipelines uh, to great effects, uh, which is great because it makes the work itself more reproducible um, and it also validates the, the quality of the pipelines. Now, I mentioned pipelines. Um, it's not just pipelines in the NF core kind of a treasure chest. Uh, there's also in terms of code, there's also sub workflows and modules, and I'll talk a little bit about what that means in a moment. Um, but there, it, there's also tooling and recommendations for how to develop your pipelines, how to test your pipelines um, that make it easier. Even if you're not going to build a pipeline for NF Core, you can use these for your own work, or you can take an NF Core pipeline and modify it as you like. So this is a really, really very valuable resource. Um, since so we're talking about pipeline components, one of the things I want to mention, uh, this is an optional feature of Nextflow, but it's highly recommended to use it. Um, you don't have to write the entire workflow in just one file. Um, in fact, we recommend uh, separating out into a modular structure, separating out your code to have, um, to, to be able to manage your code in a way that's makes it reusable. So if you have the same, so if you have multiple pipelines that benefit from using, um, that, that run some of the same steps, you can uh, write a sub workflow that is imported and used by multiple pipelines. Um, drilling down even at an even lower level, modules are individual processes that have been encapsulated as standalone code that any sub workflow or workflow um, can can import. And that's one of the nice things about NF Core is that volunteers have been doing this work of, of modularizing tools, um, popular bioinformatics tools. And at this point, I believe there's over 1,200 um, uh, distinct bioinformatics tools that have been modularized. So if you are running writing a pipeline um, and you need to to run one of those tools you don't have you don't even have to write a process you can just import one of the nf core um, modules and that's it's already written and there's tests written for it and everything so that's that's a very uh big time saver as well um at this point in addition to those 108 uh kind of official nf core pipelines we're aware of about a thousand other pipelines that have been built based on the NF Core templates. So all of the um, uh, pipelines in NF Core are built on the same templates that kind of describes the structure of the code and a number of uh, elements, um, including how to write in the documentation and the tests. And so there's uh, quite a lot of work that has been done building on, um, on that template. Uh, so people are really finding that very useful as a way to build robust uh, pipelines without having to reinvent the wheel. Um, and of course, is a community project. It's very lively and very dynamic, and I encourage you to reach out and participate. There's um, a lot of uh, activities that are organized by the NFCore group uh, of enthusiasts. Um, there's online seminars and trainings. There's hackathons. Uh, some of the hackathons are in person. Some of them are uh, remote. So once or twice a year, 
was here, I believe, uh, we do a fully remote hackathon. So anybody in the world can participate. And we're kind of working on improving how convenient it is to, to participate in the remote hackathons if you're, um, let's say, further away from one of the main uh, sources of density. Um, but obviously, well, maybe not obviously, but traditionally, um, NFCore has kind of started in Europe as, as the output collaboration between researchers at multiple European institutions. Um, it has spread throughout the world. There's, there's uh, especially in the US, um, obviously, I'm, I'm very aware uh, of the time difference uh, for for you folks in um, in Australia and New Zealand. It's obviously much. Um, it can be quite difficult to participate in events, even if they're remote, because of the time differences. Um, and I'm still dealing with the jet lag, so I'm painfully aware right now. Um, but uh, I, I would say there's we're we're, we're this is one of the things that we're figuring out is how to have uh, remote nuclei um, so that you can be uh, working with people as part of these hackathons on a time zone that makes sense for where you are uh, located geographically. That's a bit of a work in progress, but we'd love to, to think through and work through that um, with you all. Um, there's also other um, ways to get involved with and of course, there's a community Slack that's very active. Um, it's a great place to go to talk about the pipelines and especially contribute or engage with the maintainers and developers of those pipelines or propose your own pipeline addition. Um, documentation, swag, all that good stuff. Um, definitely check out the NF Core resources, especially if you want to um practice and improve your next flow skills that's a great way getting involved is a great way to um to get that practice and get the interaction um with with other developers and other researchers now i'm going to talk a little bit about how do you get started how do you get help and engage with the community beyond the the scope of nf core um probably the first place to start for, for most of you, if you're new to Nextflow, is to go to our training portal at training.nextflow.io. We have a number of re uh, training resources, training courses um, that are available for self-service. And they're set up in a Git Gitpod environment that is preloaded. So you basically spin up a virtual environment um, where you all the code, the data, everything is, is already preset. Um, and you can work through the exercises and work on learning Nextflow without having to worry to, um, about uh, anything else. Then after that, at some point, you'll need to, to work on your own uh, local um, infrastructure or something like that, and we can help you at that point. My recommendation is start with the Gitpod learning because that'll allow you to, um, to get started without the distractions of having to figure out infrastructure. Um, where to get help? The best place to get help, uh, I'm going to say, is at the community forum. So at community.sakara.io, we have an open forum um, where anybody can ask questions. Um, the intent is, is for it to be a primarily peer A lot of people are really keen to help each other. Um, so if you post there, you will get answers. Um, in addition, this is moderated by my team. And so we we make sure that um, if you post here, we will we make sure that you get an answer either through the community or through us. Uh, if if we need to, we can call in um, help from the Nextflow engineering team, etc. So um, come to the forum uh, for help. If you're already aware of the Slack workspace, we do have a Slack workspace um, where you can currently ask questions, but that is something where we're um, very actively going to transition the, the Q&A and support parts uh, over to the forum because it's a better place to, to have um, uh, that, kind of, that kind of support interaction. It also make, means that anytime a question gets answered, the answer is going to be available to everyone, um, searchable through Google, et cetera. Um, the goal being to make it uh, easier and faster to find answers whenever um, issues crop up. 
So please come uh, ask your questions in the forum and also help others um, help answer other people's questions as well if you know answers to them. Uh, okay. Um, I wanted to to mention also since we're talking about the community, we have a very it's it's difficult to estimate the exact size of of a community like uh, Nextflow user base, but this is what we get if we kind of look at um, the activity uh, we see. Uh, this is Nextflow users by country, and it looks like the U.S. is ahead of everyone else. And, Alaska counts as part of that. There's not that many Nextflow users in Alaska, probably. No offense to anybody uh, who's listening to this from Alaska. Um, but uh, a more interesting way to look at this, I think, is to look at it by population size. And by the way, you see Australia and New Zealand popping up. You have some pretty reasonable um, Nextflow user density here. Uh, the, you'll see the bulk is actually, if if we look, uh, the bulk is actually in Sweden, and that's a little bit of a historical thing, because NF Core started in Sweden, and it kind of spread from there. Um, so it's, we've got a lot of density uh, in Europe, uh, fairly uh, remarkable density in Iceland and Greenland as well, <laughs> considering, but again, population density, right? Um, but you've got a lot of colleagues uh, in in Australia and New Zealand who are using Nextflow. So there's uh, probably more than you realize. Um, and so one of the things we're we're going to be uh, working on with with you all, hopefully, is is how to strengthen and and make more visible um, kind of the network um, so that uh, you can help each other. All right. Speaking of which, I wanted to say a few words about the uh, community engagement initiatives that uh, were we've launched this year, kind of on top of the regular support activities that we have and support and training activities. Um, so I'm going to talk about three specific initiatives. Um, and coincidentally, we are a team of three people, so each of us is responsible for one. Um, the Ambassadors Program is probably our most mature initiative, and that's uh, led by Marcel um, Ribeiro Dantes, who is on, on the team and who has been who conceived uh, for the most part this program and has been running it uh, for the past year. The, the goal of this program is to support individuals um, who are active in their community. So they, they are, uh, let's say, next flow enthusiasts. Um, who are keen to help others. And so uh, we have, I believe, three uh, ambassadors here in, in Australia. Um, and they are kind of, they act as the local point of contact for the, the local communities. And we support them through travel grants, um, expenses, uh, training resources, and other, um, other things as kind of a ad hoc. And they organize local events. Um, they will present work uh, that they've done with Nextflow at conferences, share their experience, um, and they can help you navigate uh, kind of the, the Nextflow ecosystem. So I, I would recommend uh, find out who is your local um, Nextflow ambassador and then drop them a line and say hi. Um, if you are, if you or someone you know is a Nextflow enthusiast, if you become an a Nextflow enthusiast over the course of the next few months or, or, or years. Um, you can also join and become an ambassador. Uh, we, we're running um, ongoing calls for new ambassadors every six months. And so the, the next call will close in, the current call will close in December for the 2025, first 2025 cohorts. Um, and we hope to see uh, uh, more people volunteering. This is a this is a, a really nice way to um, to to support communities locally, uh, because obviously we can't travel um, quite as much as we'd like to to support all of you. All right, so that's the ambassador program. Um, one example of an ambassador activity uh, was uh, a few months ago um, when we were running one of our online trainings. Uh, Kubra and Florian, uh, Florian, who has since joined Sakara as a bioinformatics engineer, um, the two of them organized what they called a watch party for the online training, which was more than watching. They actually ran through the training at the same time that it was given online, but having the 
um, local on-site meetup allowed them to work together and help each other work through it. So that was a really neat um, example of an ambassador activity this year. Um, another uh, initiative we're running this year is outreach to organizations. That's something that's um, uh, I'm running and that's very near and dear to my heart. And the idea here is to um, reach out to organizations who are supporting Nextflow uh, users and bioinformaticians in general and asking, what can we do to help you? Um, what can we do to, to make it easier to support your researchers, your users? Um, and one of the first things uh, that we've learned uh, this year from, from kind of starting that was we needed to have more user-friendly beginner training material. And so over the past few months, we've developed some new training modules. Um, and that is uh, now the basis of the new trainings that we're running. And we welcome anyone um, actually using our materials to, uh, to run their own trainings. You're very welcome. Um, and we've got, so we've got an introduction to NextFlow. Um, plus some additional modules uh, to leverage uh, NF core resources, use NF test for, for testing, et cetera. Um, finally, uh, the Secure Cloud Academic Program, that's a program to provide pro level access to Secure Cloud, which is our commercial product uh, for qualifying academics, which means that if you're at an academic institution that teaches and awards degrees, you can have access to Secure Cloud for free. Uh, which obviously begs the question of what is Secure, uh, Secure Platform, Secure Cloud, and I'll talk about that very briefly. Um, it's a collaborative platform that is meant to uh, make it easy to do your analysis at scale. Um, the program, uh, like I mentioned, gives you free access, uh, basically gets you a professional license um, for free. So let's talk very briefly about what is the Secure platform. I'm not going to go uh, at length because I want to make sure to have time for questions, um, but just to give you a little taste of what the platform is about. Um, the basic idea is that the Secure platform is where NextFlow runs best. Now, I did say NextFlow runs anywhere and everywhere, um, but the Secure platform is a front end an application that makes it easier to launch, monitor, and um, and uh, just generally execute your workflows. So it grew out of a, a, an application that was originally called Tower. Now it's called Secure Platform, sometimes Secure Cloud. Uh, one of the things, the, the most relevant thing for, for uh, us today here is that it's, it provides the ability to uh, load workflows and launch them and monitor them through a web uh, interface. There's also an API if you love doing things through the command line, um, but uh, it can be very helpful, especially if you're a bioinformatician working with um, biologists, wet lab biologists, for example, you can set up the pipelines in the platform and then show them how to run the pipelines by themselves, uh, which often we find uh, makes it easier to collaborate across different groups with different kind of backgrounds. So you can have a, a collection of pipelines set up. Uh, this is the example of our community showcase that anybody who signs up can access. Um, you can inspect runs, things, uh, workflows that have been run uh, previously within your workspace. And you can also, um, I've got one more screenshot, yep. Uh, you can look at a run uh, that is in progress or has completed, and you can drill down into to look at all the logs, what were the command lines, what was the configuration, et cetera, and you can monitor as it runs. And then afterwards, um, you have uh, a lot of provenance data to see uh, how it was run, find your outputs, et cetera. So that's a, just a quick little taster of um, what it looks like to run workflows. As part of the platform, uh, this is kind of an add-on. Uh, we're in the process of developing a repository of pipelines uh, where the goal is to make it easier to find and access uh, pipelines written in NextFlow. Um, so that is technically 
outside of the platform itself. It's an add-on. It's it's usable by anyone, even if you don't use platform itself. But it makes it easy to find Nextflow pipelines. Um, and we also have a similar uh, page uh, repository for containers, which uh, make it easier to find containers that have the tools that you're interested in, but also generate containers through this web interface um, by clicking, selecting the tools you want to bundle together. You can make containers um, if they don't already exist. Uh, we The platform also offers uh, some data management and data exploration capabilities. Um, I won't go into detail, but uh, just to say that the goal is to make it convenient to manage your data, run workflows on it, and of course there's one more component, which is the interactive analysis. So we have a system of data studios that's also part of the platform um, that make it possible to run things like uh, Jupyter Notebooks or our studio. You can run um, interactive analysis uh, as part of the same platform. So you don't have to have your analysis fragmented in different places. You can have your workflow execution and your interactive analysis, notebooks, et cetera, in the same place. Um, so that's that was kind of very rapid <laughs> um, and a whistle-stop tour of, of Secure Platform. We have YouTube videos that give you more comprehensive uh, demos. I encourage you to check them out if, if you're interested. Again, this is something that you can use for free at small scale or, or that you can use at a pro level. Um, again, for free if you are part of an academic institution. Um, upcoming events, the most exciting thing we have uh, coming up is our summits, our yearly summits in Barcelona, which will be the last week of October. Um, if you can join us in person, that's fantastic, of course. Uh, if not, and I understand it's a long way to go, um, you can uh, join the conference parts um, online. So the summit is composed of two and a half days of uh, either hackathon or training. So there's an NF Core hackathon track and there's a training track for beginners. Um, those run concurrently the first two and a half days of the summit and they're optional. Um, and then there's uh, two and a half days of actual conference. And that's, we have a very exciting scientific program of mostly people in the community presenting work done with NextFlow, um, as well as typically we have some um, announcements about new features, demonstrations, et cetera. Um, so again, if you can join us in person, that's always great. Uh, if not, uh, you can certainly um, join us online and the recordings will be available after the fact. Uh, okay, and that completes what I wanted to talk about today. Um, I would love to answer questions if you have any. Uh, so fire away, and thank you very much for your attention. Thanks very much, Geraldine. That was an awesome presentation and a yeah, really clear overview of everything Secure has got to offer, so I'm yeah, really happy with that. Um, Geraldine, we might just uh, start with a question from me of like, so how much does a non-bioinformatician need to know to get the most out of NextFlow? Well, <laughs> to get the most is a <laughs> that's a that's a big um, big set of goalposts. Um, I would say uh, in order to run a NextFlow pipeline that's already been been uh, created, for example, if if you're a researcher and you want to run one of the NF Core pipelines, um, the threshold is very low. Uh, if you're if you're comfortable with the command line, you can do it directly through a command line. Um, if you're not, you can use Sagara platform. Um, the NF core pipelines are almost all already preloaded pre in the platform. Um, so I would say the barrier to just running the existing pipelines is very low. Uh, where you might need to learn a little bit about the internals of how it works is if something goes wrong for troubleshooting, it helps to understand how the language works, how processes are, you know, invoked, et cetera, because, and, and where to find what information in the logs. Um, if you're, uh, if you're planning to write your own pipelines or are, Often what ha often happens is, is people take something that exists and then customize it. For example, uh, I mentioned there's like a, a thousand pipelines based on the NF core template. Um, I would bet that half of them are variants of the RNA-seq pipeline because it's extremely popular. 
but everybody has their little preferences that that change a little bit compared to um and of course standards so we see quite a lot of people taking that existing pipeline and modifying it customizing it in some way um that i would say is also a fairly low threshold uh once you 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 need to learn the basic syntax of you know processes workflow blocks and the key operators and once you understand that whatever you encounter in the script you can you can find in the documentation okay what does this bit do um how do i modify it to suit my purposes um that's also a fairly low threshold uh, developing your own pipelines from scratch i would say that's a bigger lift um, if you're doing something simple where, you know, it's three steps in a row, uh, that's very simple. <laughs> and and you, honestly, you can learn to do it in a day. Um, if you've got something with some exotic branching and, and some more complicated plumbing, uh, that can be more, more complex and can be a, a longer project. And I would say if you, if you get into that, um, one thing that's good to do is design your pipeline in a modular way where you can start by writing the, the more straightforward parts, get something working, and then add on the more complicated bits in future versions. Kind of like when, when we develop a software product, you don't try to build the entire castle in one go. You start with a, with, with a central piece. And then you you add on you add on some bits as you go, but you want to have a roadmap with a minimum viable product and things like that that you you start with that you can test and validate and then kind of gradually add on. And and I find that there's there's a natural it fits well with the learning process where you'll learn the fundamentals first, you'll be able to write that that central piece, and then you can you can get more fancy um, as you learn more. Right. Yes, it's all about building up those skills as, as you, you come through and get familiar with everything. Thank exactly. you. Exactly. And also comprehensive add, answer. Yes, I, I would add, I would add also don't try to learn all of it in one go because there's a lot. And like there's a lot of really exotic operators that you might not need to, to you don't you don't need to know how to use them until you need to use them. It is is how I would uh, put it. Yeah. Correct. Um in your slides, you mentioned some some linting tools for NF Core. Is there also these sort of static analysis and validation tools available for Nextflow? Uh, yeah, so everything that's in NF Core is actually meant for Nextflow. So it's not, um, it's kind of NF Core, you can think of it as both uh, a set of pipelines and a set of tools, but the set of tools is for working with Nextflow. And so the nice thing about the NF Core tooling is that you can pretty much pick and choose which bits you want to use. You don't have to adopt every single practice, um, but you can you can very much pick and choose um, what suits you. Right. Um, this one, you, you may have already answered it. It might just be my lack of expertise to, to know that you did answer. Um, so this person's having a little bit of a hard time learning the NF core guidelines to port their existing Nextflow pipelines over. Is there uh, some resources or recommendations for mastering the NF core side of things? Um, yes, there's actually some NF core specific training that's being developed. Uh, there's an early version, a first version that's available on the training portal. Um, and we are, we have, have a team member who is actively working on on kind of expanding those resources and and this is a collaboration with the nf core um, outreach group as well uh, so there will be some of it is a work in progress but definitely check it out and um don't be shy with your feedback uh let let them know let us know um in whether in the forum or on slack um if you find gaps or specific things that would be especially useful uh the more you tell us what you need, um, the more we can help. Fantastic, thank you. Um, so I was also gonna share, when you mentioned that the, the there's a lot of Australian users, um, that's fantastic to hear. And we're actually at the moment um, assessing interest in an Australian Nextflow network. So I've just shared my screen with a QR code. Um, so yeah, if, you, if you're interested in an Australian Nextflow network, please, fill in this survey and tell us your thoughts. So Geraldine, 
You mentioned that Secura platform is a great tool for bioinformaticians to share and exploit pipelines that they've developed that then wet lab scientists could potentially reuse them. Can you make any comment about what types of pipelines might be best suited to that? This, this person's asking maybe pipelines for repetitive tasks or, um, you know, as opposed to ones that need lots of tweaking. Yeah, I would say anytime you have something that you can, it, it's typically, I mean, what you wrap in a in an Nextflow pipeline, typically you have multiple steps that are running on a large amount of data. I mean, it doesn't have to be uh, petabytes, but um, typically what we see is is people with omics data um, to process, especially, um, especially when it's a number of tasks that can be automated where you know ahead of time um, what the parameters needs, and they need to be the same for every run. Now, there's it. It, it is possible to do some um, dynamic uh, logic inside the workflow. For example, if you have some sequencing um, samples, uh, some sequencing data, and you run that, one of the first things you want to do is run that through um, some quality control. Uh, and there's a, a quality control suite. Uh, of tools that that is also available for Nextflow, uh, multi QC. Um, so you you'll run some quality control on your data, and sometimes it is possible to say in advance already, like if a sample scores too low on this particular metric, I want to fail it out and not even bother processing it through the, the rest of the pipeline because it would be a waste of time and money. Um, or maybe it's within a certain range where it's not great, but I can apply some remedial processing steps to kind of rescue that samples. And I can I can shuttle that, um, th that sample through a different branch in the pipeline. And then there, there'll be the, the samples that are completely clean. And then I can process the normal way. And so you can have some dynamic um, logic there to handle that kind of thing. Um, as long as you don't need a human to go in and think about it, uh, you want to encapsulate as much as possible of, of the process in, in one thing where you can press one button and either go for coffee or go for lunch or go Go for the weekends, go hiking on a trip while every, while your analysis run. It's it's basically that kind of thing. If it doesn't require any manual intervention, uh, you want to put it in uh, a workflow, and and then stick that in a platform where it's easy to um, to just launch it, launch it, and forget about it until it's done. Perfect. Thank you very much. Um, we might leave it there for questions for today. Um, so if you're looking to find out more, there's a link in your chat already for the Australian Nextflow Secura service. Um, and if you are subscribed to the Biocommons newsletter, you'll also hear a bit more about it at the end of this month. Um, and if you're interested in more Biocommons training events, webinars and workshops, they're all listed on our website as well. So please go and check them out. And so lastly, to thank everyone for joining us and thank you once again, Geraldine. That was just a, a fantastic and really clear talk. I, I really enjoyed it myself personally. Uh, and lastly, an acknowledgement of our funders that Australian Biocommons is enabled by NCRIS uh, through Bioplatforms Australia funding. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining us, and we will catch you next time. Bye for now.